PB2X is coming at you with the Super 7 Semi Pros rocking the Rockies. A downpour of Devils from the Lone Star State and starting a team from scratch. Paintball to Extremes is locked, loaded, and ready to roll. That, my friends, is beautiful downtown Denver, Colorado. And that is Mile High Stadium. You know, the place where John Elway gunned his way into the NFL record books. That's not John Elway, that's just another gunslinger here in the Denver area. And you remember me, James Bates, you know, mom's office party 1998. I was the one making the copies of my butt on the copy machine. That was silly. It was fun, too. Just like Tampa. You remember a couple months ago? The Super 7 down there. We had a lot of fun. Strange ruled the roost in the semi-pros. And that's what we've got here today. We've got some semi-pro action. Some guys just waiting on that call, trying to work their way up, getting to the pro action. We've got tons of action for you today on Paintball 2 Extremes. My co-host is going to help me out. Here's Jen Pierce. You know, James, you got to wonder here at the NPPL Super 7 how these athletes are coping with this high altitude. When they say the Mile High City, it is just that, over 5,000 feet above sea level. And I am really feeling this as I climb up these stairs. When you couple that with the nearly 100 degree heat and the intense NPPL format, these semi-pros just might be semi-conscious by the end of the day. Later in the show, I'm going to profile one of these top competitors. But before we get too far along, let's go check in with James and get down and dirty. Denver is the midpoint of the Super 7 Series, and this event is crucial to the hopes of the teams looking to bump up from the semi-pro ranks to join the pros in 06. Currently, the California Ironmen are way out front. I think if we win here, we pretty much have it locked up. It doesn't really matter how we do it at the other events. Of course, we're going to go to the other events and win, but as long as we win this one, I think we got it pretty good. The Ironman's large lead has some of their pursuers taking a strategic approach. Um, right now, we're sitting in third place. We just basically got to finish in the top four of these next two events, and we'll pretty much seal it off and pop up the pro next year, see what that's all about. But those top three teams had better keep an eye out for such chargers as distortion and shock and never ever disregard the boys from Famous or Bob Long's Assassins, who both have shown some strong improvement as the year has gone by. It could be a real dogfight by the time the season wraps up in Miami. Well, that's all the dirt you're gonna get here at the NPPL Super 7, because here the fields are all made of action turf. And you gotta wonder, what do the players think about it? Let's go find out. Grass. It's a lot better, you get better traction, and you don't slip all over the turf due to the paint. So far, we've been more successful on the grass, and it's a lot softer, it doesn't hurt. Um, I like the turf. It just keeps it, because it doesn't wear out. The grass is good at the first day, but after a while it wears out. The turf doesn't wear out. I think uh, grass is like, a lot easier to slide, grip, and it um, doesn't like burn your hands and the holes in your kit. When it gets muddy, the grass is no good, and the turf's good, you know. Well, the turf's a little bit cleaner, but the grass is a lot softer. So there you have it, some real opinions on the fake stuff. Now, if you want to avoid those bruises, the strawberries, the rug burns, the scrapes, you have to have good gear. And that's what this week's One Minute Review has for you. Being a professional player in today's tournament series, it's very important that you have all the tools that you have to be able to compete. What we've done in 2005 is we've revamped our line to be cool, to be safe and to be legal for all the series and tournaments around. During the 2005 revamp, we've gone ahead and we've opened up the neck area for greater comfort. We've also included a terry cloth moisture absorbent pad. Over here on the shoulders, what we've included is a NPPL safety precaution padding, which is going to allow us to have more safety during all the events that we play this year. We've also included the same safety into the forearm and elbow padding that you see there. We've also included in our 05 line a newer material that allows the moisture to come from your body to the front of the jersey. And we've kept our traditional pouch that you can hold tools, towels, or anything else that you may need. In our 2005 pant line, we've integrated a padded harness. We've also included more ventilation in the buttocks area. We've added pockets. We've also included ventilation in the lower leg area. We've developed all these products to help you rule the world.
Ah, the sun's hot, and it's high above the mile high. And look at that. This early in the show, and I've already broken the seal. Little drops of sweat. So by the end of the show, I could be ringing wet, but it just doesn't matter because we're having so much fun here in Denver. And when we come back on PV2X, Jen will check in with one of the semi-pro leaders, and we'll get to that final round action here at the Super 7 in Denver. Stay right there. Stay on top of the paintball scene. Subscribe to Paintball to Extremes magazine. Get player interviews and tournament coverage in every issue. Paintball to Extremes magazine will keep you informed of the hottest players and the hottest gear. Plus, you'll get product reviews and expert tech tips in every issue. That's 12 issues of nonstop coverage for only $19.95. Call 1-800-PAINTBALL to order by phone or order online. Paintball to Extremes magazine. Get in the game. Paintball 2 Extremes is brought to you by Empire. Innovation, dedication, domination. By Bob Long, creator of the legendary Intimidator and Defiant Markers. And by Paintball 2 Extremes, covering the game. Invesco Field at Mile High. How about just plain old Mile High Stadium? The Mile High City, Denver. And right over there, you got to trust me because you can't see them, are the Rocky Mountains. And the Colorado Rockies, you know, the baseball team with Todd Helton and the purple pinstripes, they're right over there. But this right here, it's where they play some serious football. They're in the thick of that season right now, and they're trying to get on up the hill. Hey, some other guys trying to push their way at the top here at the MPPL Super 7 in Denver. Some young pups coming up in the summer. Pro rank, dude, why couldn't you just put like a paintball or two in there? You're doing good, though. Keep it up. Oh, that's hot. Let's go check them out. <laughs> For a team that's been around for almost five years, the Diablo Storm have some veteran guys still playing on the squad, but they picked up some new guys. Has it proven to be effective? Let's find out. Yeah, we do have some young guys on the team, like uh, Giancarlo De Prado, um, Dusty and Devin O'Dell, you know, the younger guys. Colt Roberts is one of the younger guys. So new personnel to the team, but uh, definite assets for sure. One of those young guns, 19-year-old Dusty O'Dell, has been a key part of the restructured Storm. Last year, it was pretty much a young team. Then we had to rebuild this year because a couple people left. And I just want to grow as a team and be the best that we can be, really. Chris Burkhardt is the only remaining original player still with the team. And the youth movement has him excited. We've got these incredible kids to play with us. It's just, it's, it's evolved into a powerhouse semi-pro team. Diablo Storm is also hoping for a return of some of the strong results they experienced in 2004. Last year we had a really good season. We had, uh, you know, multiple trips to the podium. We went over to Spain, won Spain. Um, we won this event last year here. Um, and then San Diego, we took a second place. So we want to be back in that, you know, same spot again this year. And hopefully this event is, is it for us. Well, sadly, the Storm did not score a repeat in Denver, finishing 15th out of 16 teams. While at the top of the heap were Dynasty Dynamics, Bob Long's Assassins, Famous, and California Ironmen. What has 28 legs, fast fingers, and a hunger for green? Why, the finalists in the semi-pro division, of course. Let's go check in with our crack commentary crew and find out who's dominating in Denver. And Jim, when those four teams got it on, it was Ironman over Dynasty Dynamics and Bob Long's Assassins over Famous in two games. There's the Assassins right there. And on the other side in the red, it's the Ironman. These are highlights from game one of our finals, getting it on. Both these teams coming out of the gate strong, throwing paint, trying to get a couple casualties on the break. Looks like the Ironman spread it pretty wide, trying to get some territory on the break. And the Assassins look like they might have suffered one or two casualties. Ref checking a player now. Yeah, it looks like one down. The Ironman having an advantage here. Oh, another assassin going back to the net. 
So Bob Long taking a beating here early, but still trying to make oh, right something grill. happen. Another one. Todd's fired up. Isn't yeah, he, Todd Adamson shooting him right in his grill. Get very excited. The Ironman spreading it wide here. Look like they're going to try and push this snake up the right side. Well, pushing and sliding and sliding and pushing. See how they use this turf to their advantage. The turf down here in the parking lot of Mile High goes. Stadium. Look at him slide. Zizek Barrow on the slide for his Iron Men. Firing away now. He's up right there near the 50 and goes across it. Yeah, Zizek making a beautiful move into the snake. He's going to work his way up that right wire. Looks like the Assassin's now having to suck it tight and play a little bit of defense. Iron Men definitely have field position in this game so far. Back on their heels. Almost lost another one, but dipping behind the pop can. Moving still are the guys in red. Zizek crawling down the right side, getting on their side of the field, giving them a huge O, oh, but Billy Saransky taking one in his right arm. That could change it a little bit, but the Assassins still look like they're in a defensive mode with the Ironmen all the way up the right side of the snake. So everything seemed to be going the Iron Men's way until Saransky gets hit, and it looks like Barrow may have just taken one to the ear. The ref will check him out and take him out. How about this? Wow. So the Assassins with the defense sitting back and waiting. Tyler Harmon will strut down and take the flag. That's game one. We'll be back later with game two. In a few weeks, we're going to take you to the International Amateur Open. And we thought it would be interesting to track a newly formed team and watch them prepare for this event. Let me introduce you to the team that will be known as PBX Factory. Maybe it begins with a notice tacked on a bulletin board or a few phone calls between friends, and a group of strangers meet for the first time. Their goal, form a new paintball team. Their timetable, three weeks to their first tournament. So how would they describe day one? It was a little rough. It's kind of chaotic. It's very close to chaotic, but not really that negative. There was a lot of uh, confusion. After running a series of drills to check out the player's technique, the team's brain trust figured the next step would be to hold a scrimmage and they learned a lot from watching the different styles of play. We wanted to basically find somebody who's going to be a lot more mature in terms of handling the pressures, somebody who won't get rattled. The last thing that we wanted to get on the team, regardless of, regardless of their talent level, was to get an egomaniac on that team. Another key moment in the early stages was to debrief with the players on what they did right, what they did wrong, and how to improve. A crucial factor is communication. You gotta kind of rely on the guy behind you to to, you know, say, hey, you know, do this, go here. And he's almost like your joystick, you know? I mean, he's telling you what to do. You're just a video game. Next week, the PBX Factory video game gets more intense. Hey, bet you didn't know this. Not far from where we're playing paintball today, there's a U.S. Mint that produces over a billion, that's right, a, 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 a billion coins a month. That's pretty cool. You know what else is cool? Paintball 2 Extremes, the magazine. Now, they don't quite produce over a billion copies a month, but still, there are a lot of copies out there, a lot of satisfied readers, and the magazine is always money, isn't it? And the November issue is worth a mint, with coverage of the Northeast Open, the Paris Millennium Tournament, and part one of the Ref's Domain Series. Get yours today. Stay on top of the paintball scene. Subscribe to Paintball to Extremes magazine. Get player interviews and tournament coverage in every issue. Paintball to Extremes magazine will keep you informed of the hottest players and the hottest gear. Plus, you'll get product reviews and expert tech tips in every issue. That's 12 issues of nonstop coverage for only $19.95. Call 1-800-PAINTBALL to order by phone or order online. Paintball to Extremes magazine. Get in the game. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Denver and the MPPL Super 7 and Paintball to Extremes. Wow, that was fun. 
And you know, my co-host, Jen Pierce, she's always complaining, oh, you get to do all the fun stuff, like interview Bob Long in the line of fire, or the lovely Tammy Adamson, or Rocky Knuth, or the lovely Tammy Adamson, or Raymond Knuth and the lovely Tammy Adamson, and all that fun stuff. So, Jen, why don't you take over? It's your turn in the line of fire. Check this out. Bart. Yes, Jenny. Bart is CEO of Peer Promotions. Tell me what your job is. What do you do? Well, I pretty much take care of, um, we book all the venues, run the, uh, run the series, set up the event, run the event. For the league, which is the MPPR, which comes in and actually referees the games and they uh, look after all the teams and do all the rules and the decisions and so on. So. Okay. Do you play paintball? I've played a little bit in the past, yes I have. Do you like it? I do like it, yeah. I'm not very good. I like to <laughs> have a couple of drinks and go out and <laughs> shoot a little bit of a bit of paint and uh, stay at the back with some good guys in front of me and I quite enjoy that. What's your favourite movie? Um, I like uh, Pulp Fiction probably. And uh, favourite actor? Uh, John Travolta's really good in that film, so... Mm -hmm. Can you give me a little demonstration? No. No. <laughs> no staying alive? No. But I like that song. You it's like the that The Bee Gees song, yeah. Yes, the Bee Gees. You like the Bee Gees? I love the Bee Gees. Well, we have a, that's why we always call our last event of the year in my, in the, the Commander's Cup. It's after Morris Gibb. He played on the scene for a while before he died. And uh, we have a lot of affinity with the Bee Gees. We always play a Bee Gees track on the final day. Now, other than the Bee Gees, what do you listen to? The Bee Gees. I don't listen to the Bee Gees all the time. It's a bit of Bee Gees stuff. When I'm in my car at home, I listen to classical music. What's your favorite city in America? Miami. Why? I think it's just a great party town. I like the beaches. I like all the clubs and the hotels. I think it's a very elegant place to go. There's a lot of flamboyance down there, isn't there? A lot of mixture of different people. Uh -huh. like Lots it. of different people. Lots to do. You'll it's, see it all yeah, no, in I like Miami. Miami. I like Miami. Yeah. But I like a lot of places. Well, that's my favorite. All right. Well, thank you so much. All right. Thank that's, you very much. That about does it. Good. Thank you, Jenny. All right, Jen, you call that in the line of fire. How about this? This is the line of fire. The Iron Man on the right. Bob Long's assassins on the left. The assassins took game one. Here's game two in Denver. And the assassins found themselves in the first game playing a little bit of defense. Looks like they were trying to spread it out wide this time, take a little more territory. That snake really hurt them last game. Iron Man in the red, in the gray. Bob Long's assassins. Assassins up one game right now. They win this one and they take home. The championship here in Denver, the MPPL Super 7. Very hot day, very big crowd here. A lot of big paintball fans here in Colorado. You can see Bobby's guys definitely focusing, not letting them get in the snake this time as early as they did last time. You saw last time the Ironman Snake guy got all the way down the wire, caused a lot of damage to Assassins. But the Assassins held their fort and sat back on their heels and played some defense. Playing a little bit of defense here too. It looks like this time they tried to spread the field a little wide. They went for the snake on the break. He didn't make it, but while the Ironmen were focused on that, looks like the Assassins have made a push up the center. They've gotten really good angles. That way they can cut the snake down. Looks like they got the Ironmen kind of pinched up and bunched up in the center right now. Well, Tyler Harmon, the Assassin, that's taken that snake in a big move after a defensive start to this game. The Assassin's on the offensive right now in a place that's known for offense. Mile High Stadium. We're in the parking lot anyway. The Denver Broncos and John Elway used to do their thing and well the Ironman doing a little something now too. So we've got one guy from each team in that snake facing off. Yeah, the Ironman had to spread out a little bit. They had three, four guys bunched up in the back trying to trying to shoot their way out of it. Finally getting one guy into the snake. This will help them out a little bit. Todd Adamson trying to cover the guy in the snake, but Assassins look like they have a better field position right now in this game. Of course, they know if they win this one, they take it home in two. Ironman right now fighting for their lives. Scrapping and clawing, trying to move up that snake. The Ironman trying to make a little push here and do some damage. They got here by taking down the Dynasty Dynamics in three games in the semifinals. And Bob Long's Assassins, they beat Famous in two games, trying to beat the Ironman in two games for the championship. Yeah, you can see the Ironman Snake player now trying to get some angles. He's looking for those Assassin Center guys. Those Assassin Center guys right now have that snake pretty much under control. They've locked it down, but he's hunting, trying to get him elimination, get back in this game. They're basically fighting for their life here, and the Assassins have really good position in this game. Big Todd making a move up. You saw Harry Field there in the middle of the field over the shoulder of Tyler Harmon and all those fans here in the grandstands. 
Todd trying to make a super creeper move up the center. He's known for splitting the seam. Veteran been around a long time. You see Tyler, he won the first game sitting in the snake. Oh, looks like Todd might have got one in the head. He did, and he's gone. And guess what? We're gone too. We got to take a quick break. But when we come back, the conclusion of game two, stay right there. Stay on top of the paintball scene. Subscribe to Paintball to Extremes magazine. Get player interviews and tournament coverage in every issue. Paintball to Extremes magazine will keep you informed of the hottest players and the hottest gear. Plus, you'll get product reviews and expert tech tips in every issue. That's 12 issues of nonstop coverage for only $19.95. Call 1-800-PAINTBALL to order by phone or order online. Paintball to Extremes magazine. Get in the game. Paintball to Extremes is brought to you by National Paintball Supply, number one supplier to the number one extreme sport. By Diablo, play with fire. And by Paintball to Extremes, covering the game. Welcome back, everyone, as the drama in Denver continues here in game two of the finals of the semi-pros. James Bates, Paul Bolin back. And the Iron Men and Bob Long's assassins going at it. The Iron Men in the red on the right and on the left, hunkered down right now, trying to make a move. Bob Long's assassins. They won game one, trying to take game two in a championship home. Yeah, the assassins looking really good right now. They've really cut down the snake from the first game, which caused them a lot of problems. Uh, pushing up the center. Looks like the assassins kind of have this in control. Little pain on the knee of the Iron Man snake player, but that's from crawling on the turf. Two guys still in that snake. And do they know that they're there? Are they just kind of waiting each other out? Yeah, the assassins know that this, the guy's in the snake. The snake guy caused a lot of damage in the last game, and they're really keeping him under control this game. Right from the break, they set up their lanes and made sure the snake guy was pretty much ineffective. Looks like the snake might be gone. That is huge. Of course, if the assassins win this, up, oh, suffering their own casualties here. Wow, one gone for the assassins, one gone for the Iron Man. And there's Harry Field, and one more gone for the guys in red. Had a few bonus balls to boot. The trying gonna... to make a big run through here. Oh, the Assassins oh. didn't realize there was a player he left. He did not see him. Oh, he ate that. A face full of egg yolk, it looks like. And guess what? We've got a one-on-one -on -one situation for you. Tyler Harmon, the snake player for the Assassins, trying to find Zizek Barrow, the back player. There he is in the red for the Ironmen. How about this drama? Is this exciting or what? Absolutely. Tyler, knowing that a snake against a stand-up bunker is not the greatest place, so he's trying to cone out the back player right now and work his way to a better bunker. He does. He's in his way over to the car wash. going to reload. So Isaac had the advantage in a better bunker to start with, but Tyler was able to move himself over to a bigger bunker, reload, and now we're just going to see who has better gun skills. Look at Tyler, cool as a cucumber. Not only playing against Zizek, but he's telling our cameraman, hey, don't tip off where I'm at right now. This is pretty important. Zizek just waiting for Tyler Harmon to make a mistake. Battling out, Harmon makes a move. Swinging over to the Dorito, looks like. Here it comes. Yep, he's going after him. Oh. And he got him in the left shoulder. How about that? Tyler Harmon and the Assassins. They'll take game two and the championship here in Denver. Tyler Harmon put a cape on that kid. That's two games in a row. Wow. Jen Pierce is now with Harmon and his buddies, the champions, from the MPPL Super 7 in Denver. All right, this is the first MPPL event that you guys have won so far. How do you feel? Good, feel great. Feels good to win anytime. <laughs> and you are the last one standing. You won it for the team. How does that feel? Feels great. We all did it as a team, and we all won as a family. Well, the good. Right. Congratulations. So with that brilliant win by Bob's boys, they vault from 10th to 4th in the semi-pro standings. Only one point out of second place. It should make for a super stretch run for the Super 7. 
So congratulations to our semi-pros taking home that big paycheck, but more importantly, adding on that 50 points that'll count towards next year's pro status. Speaking of the pros, that's what we've got on the show next week here at Paintball 2 Extremes and right here in the shadows of Mile High Stadium. It's all pros all the time, so if you can just sit patiently and wait, oh, approximately 167.5 hours. I did that in my head. Hey, keep Paintball 2 Extremes in your head. For Jen Pierce, I'm James Bates. We'll see you next week.